Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to see about the calculation of the net asset value of mutual funds. If you are a beginner and you do not know anything about NAV, then don't worry. We will be covering some basics of NAV. And also, if you are someone who knows a little bit about NAV but want to know more and dive deep into the concept, then also you have to watch this video because we have many new things that you would come across so let's begin here we have the formula for the calculation of nav so if you are new to this concept and if you are a beginner just glance through this once and please do not panic if you do not understand something now we will proceed in a very logical manner so that if, even if you are a beginner you will understand what is nav okay so moving towards the core concept now NAV per unit is calculated as total assets minus total external liabilities divided by number of outstanding units. Okay, once again, NAV per unit is equal to total assets minus total external liabilities divided by number of outstanding units. Now, in further slides, we will be discussing about what are total assets, what are total external liabilities, and what are outstanding units so that we could complete our formula and calculate NAV in the end. Let's move ahead. Okay, so you should know that every mutual fund house collects money from you and me and in turn invests them into equity or debt instruments. So what mutual fund does is it collects a lot of money from many individuals and organizations and invests them into further instruments like debt instruments or in the share market that is equity. So you know two things now equity and debt equity is nothing but share market the investments done in share share market and what is debt debt is the money that the mutual fund house will lend to someone in return of which it will get some interest and what will it get in case of equity it will generate return and in case of debt it will generate some interest so the money that the mutual fund house collected from you and me is known as asset under management AUM. So we will now sum up the total assets part which includes the AUM that is the money which it uh, raised from you and me plus the return on equity investment. It means the return from share market. Okay. And plus interest on debt that is interest on the money that it lended to someone. So it will sum up to become the total assets. Okay. Moving forward now, we will see what are units. So for every investment made by an individual, some units are allocated to the investor. Okay, to clarify, we have an example. Suppose that the fund needs to raise rupees 1000. And it decided the face value of one unit to be rupees 10. So what will be the total units that are available with the mutual funds that it has to allocate to all the investors is total 100. 100 into 10 is 1000 so if i need to invest some money in this mutual fund i will have to buy a minimum of one unit that is investment of minimum rupees 10 i cannot have investment of rupees 5 but in the multiples of 10 that is 10 20 30 etc so in this uh, scenario for example suppose you invested rupees 200 in this mutual fund so against your investment the mutual fund house will issue you some units what are these units these will calculate out to be 20 units how the investment amount is 200 divided by the unit price of one unit is rupees 10 so you will be allocated 20 units of that mutual funds so in future if you think you have to withdraw some units for example say 10 units you want to withdraw out of it you will be paid rupees 100 so i hope now you get how units are allocated to the investors let's move ahead now see here is the formula again we have discussed total assets and number of outstanding units outstanding units is nothing but those units which are issued to the investors okay and we have now to discuss the total liabilities part so that we can complete our formula and calculate the nav so let's move ahead so you see here now every fund house has to incur a variety of expenses also in order to efficiently manage a fund this is common sense that if a fund is managing something that is managing such a huge amount it would incur some expenses also so expenses are also known as liabilities or payables this can be classified as salaries payable brokerage is payable okay that is the amount payable to the staff that is employed in the mutual fund office okay. 
the brokerages that are payable to the broker of the mutual fund house so these are some expenses that are considered as liabilities external liabilities okay so now our formula is complete we have discussed total assets total external liabilities and outstanding units we will move forward to the calculation of nav part now assume that the mutual fund house needs to raise assets of rupees 1000 okay the funds of rupees 1000 and the units allocated to all the investors is 100 units and assume that liabilities stand out to be rupees 20 that may include brokerage or salary etc okay so rupees 10 salary rupees 10 brokerage anything now we will put all these things into the formula that is nav is equal to total assets rupees 1000 minus total external liabilities rupees 20 divided by the units allocated those are 100 so our nav will come out to be yes 980 divided by 100 is equal to 9.8 per unit so that is how we calculate nav in a broad sense so i hope you got an idea now let's move ahead so here we have the balance sheet to show all the transactions so initially the fund raised rupees thousand that is the cash at bank and what is the liability that is unit holders fund 100 units at the rate of 10 each so initially the balance sheet would look like this so the mutual fund house now decides to invest this money into equity that is in share market it purchases the shares of company a 100 shares of company a at rupees 5 each which equals to rupees 500 investment and 100 shares of rupees 3 each in company b that equals to rupees 300 of investment so now it plans to invest rupees 800 that is 500 plus 300 into equity out of the total 1000 rupees raised from the public okay so in the balance sheet now we have classified the total amount as bank 200 and investment divided in 500 and 300 that is 800 on the asset side and on the liability side we have unit holders fund that is intact at rupees 1000 okay now see here the total assets are thousand but external outside liabilities are zero because the unit holders fund is our asset only but we don't have any external liability that is we don't have any salary to be paid now and no brokerages assume that so the nav calculation would be thousand minus zero divided by hundred total assets minus external outside liabilities that are zero divided by the total units that are hundred units to be issued to all the investors so our NAV would come out to be 1000 divided by 100 that is rupees 10 per unit okay so this is how we calculate NAV so for every one unit the investor has to pay rupees 10 to get invested okay so what a balance sheet looks like unit holders one is 1000 assets are total 1000 assume that we have paid a salary of rupees 100 to our fund manager now the bank would no longer be rupees 200 it would become 100 and we have a liability which will show something as a profit and loss account that is reserves and surplus of negative 100 because we paid a salary from bank so reserves and surplus negative 100 now you see assets is 900 liabilities is also 900 so we have now a balanced amount both sides so the net assets come out to be rupees 900 why thousand that were total assets minus the liability that we paid that is the salary so 1000 minus 100 is 900 divided by the total outstanding units issued to investors 100 is equal to rupees 9 so the new nav has come out to be rupees 9 okay so in this example we assume that we have already paid the salary but if we want to think like that the salary is outstanding and yet not paid in that case our bank would be 200 only and we have we would have a salary outstanding in the liability side of 100 and the reserves and surplus of negative 100 okay so we assume that the salary has not yet been paid but it is a liability no so we have to show it in the liability side okay so again so if you see here we have again a balanced balanced amount on both the sides that is that reserves and surplus and salary outstanding a negative and positive of 100 would get cancelled and assets and liabilities would be balanced at rupees thousand so how would be the nav calculated now 
see here total assets are 1000 we have an external liability of 100 so 1000 minus 100 is equal to 900 divided by the total outstanding units will be equal to 9 rupees again which we saw in the previous example so we talked before that the mutual fund company has invested some amount that was 800 in equity now if we see that in later in future after some time the value of those shares appreciate so we have an increased amount now of investment which would be rupees 1300 how 700 plus 600 okay earlier it was 500 plus 300 so as the value of shares appreciated our investment amount will also appreciate coming to a balance sheet now the investment amount of 800 will increase to rupees 1300 and the total of asset side will become rupees 1500 now and on the liability side the reserves and surplus of negative 100 would become 400 why because see earlier investments were rupees 800 and now it appreciated by rupees 500 so the reserves and surplus would increase by 500 earlier there was a negative balance so when it would be adjusted so 500 minus 100 is equal to rupees 400 now you see on the liability side and the asset side our balance is again equal okay now coming to our formula nav per unit is equal to total assets minus total liabilities upon number of outstanding units assets is 1500 how 1300 of investments plus 200 cash at bank to total 1500 and liabilities is rupees 100 how see the reserves and surplus is not counted as an external liability it has to be returned to the shareholders only so the only external liability we have is salary outstanding so we have taken that into account so our total liability is 100 and the units that were allocated to all the investors is 100 only so the NAV calculation would turn out to be 1500 minus 100 divided by 100 that is 1400 divided by 100 is equal to rupees 14 per unit okay so that is how the NAV is calculated here hey you note one thing if assets are constant and liabilities are increasing or if assets are growing at a slow rate and liabilities are increasing at a greater rate then the NAV will decrease as we saw in the first example where we had to pay a salary of rupees 100 and our investments were 1000 only but we had a salary to pay of rupees 100 in that case our NAV turned out to be rupees 9 but if assets are increasing and liabilities are constant or increasing at a slow rate then NAV will increase as we saw in the just uh, uh, recent example that we saw in the previous slide where our total assets were 1500 and the liability was 100 only in that case our NAV turned out to be rupees 14 so if assets are increasing liabilities are constant or decreasing or increasing at a slow rate then NAV will increase okay so I hope you now got a very clear understanding of the calculation of NAV so if you like this video please hit the like button you can subscribe my channel and please share this video with your friends so thanks for watching my video and i will see you in the next one goodbye